So you think you're ready for Megasquirt, huh? All right, well that's good because in this video I'm gonna cover the physical installation of Megasquirt. Um, it's gonna be everything from removing your old ECU, deleting your AFM, setting up base timing, loading maps, and the initial software setup for Megasquirt. Don't know what Megasquirt is? Check out last week's video right here. Um, it's basically an introduction to Megasquirt, kind of goes over what Megasquirt is and why you'd want to put it in your car. Um, this video is going to contain a lot of information and be a little lengthy, so what I've done is provided on screen here and in the description a table of contents that'll be able to link you to each step of this process in case you want to refer to it later. So here's my disclaimer. I am not responsible for blowing your car up. You should use this video as a supplement to your research. This is only a single fish in a sea of information. The best place to find a lot of information about Megasquirt and Miatas is MiataTurbo.net. I have learned a lot of stuff from that website. Uh, I am not a professional. I've learned a lot of what I know from people who get paid to do this. I do not get paid to do this. This is just a hobby for me. Big shout out to Advanced Engine Dynamics in Orange County for helping me out so much uh, with the tuning of this car and allowing me to just stomp out Mustangs on the regular. Uh, my car is a 1992, it's got a 1.6 liter and I'm using MS2 plug and play. Um, if you have a 1.8 liter or even an NB or if you're using MS3 or a DIY version, the install might vary a little bit so keep that in mind. Another thing is, is you should already have a wideband installed in your car or be installing one with Megasquirt. Uh, you can't really do much tuning without a wideband. I'll briefly cover how to hook up an existing wideband to Megasquirt, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the wideband itself. If you want a video on how to install a wideband in your car, you know the drill, drop me a comment. All right, I think we're ready. Let's get to it. All right, first thing we got to do, going to come right into the trunk and remove your negative battery terminal. Right back there. You always want to remove your negative battery terminal when you're working on your car, especially with electronics. Um, you don't want to damage anything, uh, or worse, you don't want to uh, shock yourself. Next up, we're going to remove the stock ECU. All you got to do is take off your little uh, trim panel here with those Phillips head screws. To get all those screws out, that just pops right off. Go ahead and pull that seal up. Kick panel literally just comes right out. Ooh. Next, you're going to pull back your carpet. It's going to expose that plate. Just got a couple 10 millimeter nuts. 10 millimeter bolt up there. I'm sure most of you guys will know how to remove your stock ECU, but I kind of want to cover it quickly and be as thorough as possible. So there's your stock ECU. Pretty much just got to unbolt it. Unplug your two plugs. If they give you any trouble, you can use a little flathead to persuade them. Next up, come over to your engine bay. You're gonna pop the lid on this fuse box right here. And you see I have a fuse missing. You have to remove that fuse. Uh, mine's already gone because I've already had Megasquirt installed, but just to show you the entire box, it's this bottom right socket right there that doesn't have a fuse in it. You gotta remove that and you're never gonna put it back in as long as you're running Megasquirt. It's so on the, uh, the little map of fuses. It's called ST Sign is what it's labeled as. You gotta remove that, you're not gonna put it back in. Next up, you gotta route a vacuum line from the uh, passenger side footwell into your engine bay through the firewall. I use this factory plug right here. My car did not have AC, so I use one of the plugs to route it through. Um, no matter how you go through the firewall, you have to put it through some type of rubber grommet because you don't want that vacuum line to get cut. Uh, that's the main source of communication between the ECU and the engine. Uh, so imagine trying to drive to work blindfolded. That's, that's like the ECU trying to run your engine without this vacuum line hooked up. So you gotta go through the firewall, make sure it's not gonna get tangled in anything or cut. And in the instructions, it says you can hook up the vacuum line to one of these ports on your throttle body or tap into the vacuum line on your fuel pressure regulator. Um, I went for that option because I just feel like it's cleaner 
they supply you with this nice tee so you can go ahead and tee it in like that i zip tied it just to be extra safe and then to go super stealth i just throw on a little uh uh, loom wrap like that and then throw a couple zip ties on there. It's like it's not even there One thing that can make it easier to get that vacuum line through your firewall and down to your foot bay is to remove your glove box Remove those two Phillips head screws from the glove box hinges. The glove box literally just drops right out Boom And you got all this room up here To uh, help get that vacuum line down into your foot bay. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, here is your mega squirt. We're gonna get ready to bolt this thing down. Um, before I put it in, let me show you what's going on. You have this port right here for your map sensor. That, um, your vacuum line that you ran earlier is gonna hook up to that thing. This is where your tuning cable goes. Uh, that's how you're gonna hook your laptop up to it. There is also another option to hook up a Bluetooth adapter to this, so you can tune with your tablet if you prefer that method. And this is your options port. You don't, you will not be hooking anything up to this for the initial setup and first start. Uh, but if you want to add things on later with the kit, they include the options plug, which you kind of have to build yourself. They give you a whole bunch of wires and stuff like that. You build this plug yourself. I already have a couple things going on there. And then you'll hook it up into here and you can just hook up all kinds of options like sequential injection, boost control, sequential ignition. And in this side, that's where your stock harness plugs into. So you're gonna need to drill these tiny little holes in your floor. I already have mine drilled here. And I have my MS mounted just like that. So after you get your mega squirt all secured and bolted down, take that vacuum line you ran earlier Hook it up to that map sensor port. Take your tuning cable. I'm gonna plug that in. And you're going to plug your stock harness right in just like that. So removing the airflow meter. Uh, mine's already removed, so I'm not gonna cover the physical uh, uninstallation of the airflow meter. Um, but it's literally just a couple 10 millimeter bolts and then you have to either get a straight pipe or figure something out with an air filter uh, I literally just put an air filter on the end of my stock crossover tube when I did this Next step is you have to drill and tap for an air intake temperature sensor You want the air intake temperature sensor to be right before the throttle body uh, Do not have it coming right off the turbo. Do not have it somewhere over here by your air filter I gotta have it right before the throttle body. You're gonna use a 916 drill bit and a 38-18 NPT tap. It's gotta be NPT, that means the threads are tapered. If you get your Mega Squirt with the IAT kit, it'll come with this connector and the sensor. Plug that bad boy in. This is your stock AFM plug. Pay attention to the orientation here. You have your two two cutouts on top and your three three cutouts on the bottom. You're gonna take your pins from your air intake temperature sensor and you're gonna plug them in to the first and the sixth port right there. It doesn't matter which way the wires go, the air intake temperature sensor does not have polarity, but you do have to plug them into the first and the sixth plug there. After you're done, you should wrap this entire thing with electrical tape to kind of shield it from the elements and make sure that those connectors stay in place. Okay, back behind your valve cover and by your intake manifold, you have a plug that looks like this. There's just a single wire going into this plug. This is for your O2 sensor. Since the Mega Squirt runs into your factory harness, you're gonna hook your wideband right into where the factory O2 sensor goes. Your wideband is gonna have an output signal wire and you're gonna just splice it right into your factory harness. Um, then the Mega Squirt will read right off of your wideband and you'll be able to get your AFRs. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna be going into huge detail on the wideband itself, but if you guys want an install video, drop me a comment and I'll show you guys how to install a wideband. The nice people at DIY Auto Tune include this MSPNP2 CD, which comes with installation instructions, your base map for whatever model you bought, uh, and the free versions of Tuner Studio and Megalog Viewer. 
I bought the full versions because uh, you get quite a few benefits. It's only 80 bucks, but the light versions uh, give you everything you need to get the car running and get it tuned. Okay, I'm gonna try to show this stuff as clear as possible. You're gonna come over here and open Tuner Studio MS. Come up here to create a new project. We're just gonna call this YouTube. And go ahead and turn your key to the on position. And you're gonna click detect. All right, it did its thing, so go ahead and click accept. Go to next. Um, I left all this stuff alone. I already have a wideband in. Next. It's gonna do some other kind of test. Go to next. It's gonna ask you about your gauge cluster, but you don't really have to mess with that yet, so go to finish. Ignition is on, so we're gonna be all connected. Okay, so you're all set up. You gotta make sure you load your base map. So you come up here to file, open tune. I got my base map right here, 90 to 93 Miata. Now it's gonna ask you, would you like to send and burn configuration to the controller? That means do you wanna send the map to your ECU? So you're gonna go ahead and click yes. The base map is also available for free online. Uh, I'll go ahead and provide a link to that page as well in the description. One last thing you have to do since we deleted the airflow meter, you're gonna come right up here to tools, calibrate thermistor tables. You're gonna see that drop down menu, go ahead, select air temperature sensor. The GM sensor is the one that's included with the MSP and P if you get the optional AIT uh, kit. So go ahead and select GM. Bias resistor value, make sure it's 2490. I went ahead and selected Fahrenheit. And then you're gonna click right to controller. Okay, so it literally just went from blazing hot to freaking downpour right in the middle of trying to film this. So um, sorry for the noise, but I'm gonna continue anyways. So one more thing you gotta do before you start your engine is verify the base timing. First step, you're gonna come up to ignition settings, ignition options, wheel decoder. Come over here to fixed advanced, fixed advanced, excuse me. Go to fixed timing and make sure that your timing for fixed advance is set at 10 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and click burn. All right, dudes, we are relocating to higher ground so I can finish up this video. So we have to verify our base timing, and what that means is the mechanical timing of the engine has to match what Megasquirt thinks it is. So all your spark maps um, are actually what they are, and you're not more advanced or more retarded than you think. First thing I'm gonna show you how to do is hook up a timing light. We have an induction clamp. You're gonna go ahead and clamp that onto your number one spark plug wire. That's your front spark plug wire. After that, you have your power and ground, which normally you would just hook up to your battery, but in the Miata, the battery is in the trunk. So, for the ground, you can literally hook it right up to your intake manifold. So down on your alternator, you have this little cap here. You gotta open up that cap You gotta place your power right on that thing. That's gonna give your timing light its power. If you just put your motor together or you just installed your cast or something like that and you think your base timing may be way off, you can come over here to your fuse box and pull your fuel pump relay so you can crank the engine and check the timing without it actually starting. Um, it's safer to do it that way if you think you might be overly advanced. From the front of your motor, Come right down here, you can see there's a tab that sticks off of your timing belt cover. It's got a T on it and a 10. Um, that stands for 10 degrees advance. The T stands for top dead center, which means zero degrees. So you're gonna be aiming the timing light at that tab, and then you've got a tick mark on your pulley. Mine's an aftermarket pulley, but the stock pulley also has a tick mark. You see where it says TDC. That's the tick mark that you're gonna be looking for. When TDC lines up with the 10, 
you're at 10 degrees advanced. So let's check it out and see what mine is. Okay, so you can see that my timing is too far advanced because I'm shooting for 10. Now, you can come back here and you physically rotate your crank angle sensor, but you have another option. From my point of view, it looked like I was about four degrees advanced. So I come up here to ignition settings, ignition options. Remember, you should be on fixed timing and timing for fixed advanced should be 10 degrees. I'm gonna come over here to trigger angle offset. I see four degrees. Now, the, the higher the number, the more you're going to retard the ignition. So it looked like I was about four degrees too far advanced. So I'm gonna retard my ignition another four degrees. Set this to eight. Come down here, click burn. We're gonna start it up and try it again. After you're done setting up your base timing, make sure you come back here and select use table. Come down here and go ahead and burn it. All right, so that's it for the physical installation and initial setup of Mega Squirt. If you guys have any questions at all, just drop me a comment and let me know. I'll try to get to them as quick as I can. Uh, and as far as the future, let me know what you guys want to see. I can do, um, you know, basic fuel map tuning, how to install larger injectors and what to change, uh, how to install a wideband, or how to install coilovers, or whatever you guys want to see. Let me know in the comment section. Until next week, peace.